Do lighter eyes such as blue and grey see better in low light conditions and did this give lighter eyes an evolutionary advantage? Now let's start by looking at what research has been done on the performance of lighter eyes in lower light conditions. Well a really interesting study from January of this year looked at this very topic. With the idea for the study based on the experience of one of the authors who was originally from Japan. Dr. Kyoko Yamaguchi, who is the senior lecturer in human genetics at Liverpool John Moores University, was struck by how much dimmer the lighting was in buildings when she moved to Europe from Japan, finding it too dark to read at times. This led her to wonder if there was a biological basis for this weaker lighting rather than just a cultural one. Along with one of her students, she came up with an interesting yet simple experiment. They took 40 people of European descent between the ages of 18 and 30 that had either blue or brown eyes and sat them in darkness for 30 seconds to let their eyes adjust to the darkness. The researchers then gradually increased the level of light in the room so that the participants could read a code of five randomly generated capital letters on a wall three meters away. They found that those with blue eyes needed a light level of 0.7 lux on average compared with 0.82 lux for those with brown eyes. As the researchers write, Blue-eyed individuals were identified to have significantly better ability to see in lower lighting after a short adaption period than brown-eyed individuals, making it likely depigmented irises provide an adaptive advantage. They concluded that the advantage of greater visual acuity in low-light conditions after a short adaption period could have been the basis of the emergence and persistence of blue-eye colour within the European population. Now this is all pretty fascinating. But before we move on to look at why this seems to be the case, and also look at some of the evolutionary advantages involved in this potentially being the case, I should also note, as the authors do in this study, that there are other factors involved in people being able to see in lower light conditions. Have you ever heard the expression, eating your carrots will make you see in the dark? Although this may sound like a silly expression, there is a seed of truth in it. Carrots are a source of vitamin A, and we know that having a deficiency of vitamin A can cause forms of night blindness. In fact, although they didn't know the science behind it, the ancient Egyptians knew that night blindness was some sort of deficiency. An ancient Egyptian papyrus from 1800 BC mentions instructions for a woman who cannot see to eat raw liver of an ass, with liver being a source of vitamin A. Anyway, not to go too far down the rabbit hole of vitamin A, the point is there are other factors involved in eye health in general and the ability to see in lower light conditions, and within this study, there was different amounts of light needed for people with blue eyes. It wasn't like the people with blue eyes had a kind of uniform, standardised amount of light they needed. There was some variation within the blue eye category as well. Overall though, this study found that people with blue eyes could see much better in lower light conditions than people with brown eyes after their eyes had adjusted to the darkness, which is pretty fascinating. But why does this seem to be the case? What mechanisms could be involved in people with lighter eyes being able to see better in lower light conditions? Well, as the author writes, Superior ability to see in low light conditions could be the result of increased stray light and depigmented irises, which in light luminance is disadvantageous, but in low light conditions may provide an advantage. More research is needed to determine the specific association between melanin content and low light visual acuity. So although more research is needed, it is perhaps related to increased stray light and depigmented irises, with people with blue eyes having lower levels of melanin in the layers of the iris compared to people with brown eyes. And this all makes sense logically, as lighter eyes are more sensitive to light than darker eyes. I should note that this paper is just a preliminary study and it has not been certified by peer review yet. Dr Yamaguchi is also open to secure funding for a larger study with more participants that would include people with a wider range of eye colours, which would be great to see if she does manage to get the funding, as it would be really interesting to see how green and hazel eyes perform as well. But how could this have given some of our ancestors an evolutionary advantage? Well, we know that lighter eyes are more common in Northern Europe, and we know how dark the climate can get in the winter months. One way lighter eyes could have had an evolutionary advantage is for hunting and gathering in lower light conditions. Anyone who lives in Northern Europe or has visited here in the winter months knows how dark it can be. And if you go for a walk in the forest when the weather is bad, there isn't much light at all. So lighter eyes probably would perform better in this environment when hunting and foraging in forests in low light conditions. Another way lighter eyes could have had an evolutionary advantage is for defence. Being able to see a little better in lower light conditions would have sharpened your defences a little. Being able to see attacks a little clearer, whether from wild animals or neighbouring tribes. Overall though, I would say that blue eyes being able to perform better in lower light conditions could be one reason why they evolved, but there probably are other factors going on that cause this genetic variation to be selected for over time, from being less prone to seasonal affective disorder to sexual attractiveness. 
To find out more about the origin and reason for blue eyes, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and tell your friends and family about this channel, and I'll see you next time.